Yes, uh, uh, good afternoon to all of you. It's a pleasure to participate in this interesting event and to share our Lithuanian experience relating to asset accounting from determining opening balances of assets and their measurement as of the date of transition to accrual basis to ongoing works in the field. Um, uh, in Lithuania, the accounting reform in the public sector uh, was initiated in 2004 by performing the analysis of the current situation at that time. The majority of financial information was not included in the accounting ledger and accordingly in the financial statements of the public sector entities. The major part of land, some intangibles, biological assets, heritage assets were absent in the accounting registers. The measurement was chaotic as well, based on some documents, indexation rules, neglecting the principles of prudence and economic relevance. Uh, we started our reform with preparing the, and approving necessary legislation. Uh, first, we approved, uh, prepared and approved accounting standards uh, regarding the recognition and measurement rules, also prepared and approved by the decree of Minister of Finance mandatory chart of accounts, uh, mandatory for all public sector entities, uh, also transition rules to the new chart of accounts and setting opening balances, and the government resolution on capitalization value and amortization and depreciation rates. Uh, in this, it was very important to prepare the detailed ledgers based on inventory count of all assets and liabilities as of the transition date and to assure the, assure the detailed track of data. And in this slide, you can see an example of bridging the old chart of accounts to the new chart of accounts. Uh, uh, as regards the asset uh, registration in Lithuania, there is rule to register all transactions in the accounting registries. Property, plant, and equipment is defined following the same criteria as in IPSAS. Uh, that means that it is considered whether it is probable the future economic benefits will flow to the entity and whether the cost of the item can be measured reliably. Uh, also, we have additional criteria for assigning asset to property, plant, and equipment. The acquisition cost. If the acquisition cost is 500 euro and higher, the asset is classified as property, plant, and equipment. If the acquisition cost is lower than 500 euro, uh, the asset is classified as inventory, except for real estate, heritage assets, valuables, registered vehicles, and guns, which are always classified as property, plant, and equipment. As of transition date, uh, every item was registered and appropriate amount was credited in the account of appropriations and funds received. Uh, we have several accounts based on the source of financing. If the item was acquired from the appropriations from the state budget, or municipal budget or entities revenue or European or international grants. Uh, all assets uh, except mineral resources initially are measured at cost or deemed cost and subsequently all assets uh, were measured at cost except for land, heritage assets, biological assets and mineral resources. For mineral resources, we calculate current value of future income from the tax on, on, on mineral resources, on, of the extractions. Uh, and uh, we have uh, determined nine classes um, of tangible fixed assets in the mandatory chart of accounts corresponding to the same line items presented on the balance sheet. According uh, to IPSAS, there are two measurement methods available to choose, but as the revaluation model requires periodic revaluations, it's quite ex expensive and burdensome. So we decided to have the so-called a fair value model applicable for land and heritage assets. Uh, our fair value model for real estate is based uh, on, not on uh, individual measure measurement of every item in most cases, but on the best data of market values our institutions have. For example, the Lithuanian Central Register has data of all real estate transactions and calculates average market values of similar assets in that area. 
So we use those values as a basis for measuring uh, um, for, for measuring fair value of land and heritage assets, uh, real estate. A fair value of other heritage assets, uh, if not, not real estate, if cannot be determined reliably from valuation reports, is determined based on the valuation methodology, methodology developed by the Ministry of Culture or at cost if it can be measured reliably. Uh, I would like uh, to pay a special attention to some extraordinary assets and specific nature of the accounting. In Lithuania, we have agreements when uh, one public sector uh, uh, entity gives or leases an asset uh, to the other entity for free. Uh, the assets received under these agreements are accounted by grantors, but their improvement expenses, if they are material, can be capitalized by the lessees and amortized uh, as leasehold improvements. Uh, other special items specific, for example, uh, in Lithuania, we have uh, public sector entities like theaters, libraries, uh, which are budgetary institutions also, or they are included in the public sector. So uh, some items specific, uh, for example, for theaters are stage performances. Many components are registered under the caption of one item of tangible fixed assets, which is depreciated over a planned performance period. Items specific for libraries, hundreds of thousands of books and publications. Uh, and in the accounting, they are grouped according to the select selection criteria, for example, a year or, of acquisition, and treated as one item in the accounting registers. Of course, detailed registers um, also are kept, but outside the accounting system. Uh, in Lithuania, uh, uh, we have uh, some recent developments related with the asset and the accounting. So uh, in order to get data faster and in order to optimize processes. And these projects are like uh, centralization of the accounting function, uh, it is already in the final stage because in 2019 we established a national shared service function for accounting and reporting and a number of public sector entities transferred their um, accounting function to this national shared service center. At the same time, the development of one IT system which would have uh, uh, necessary integration with asset management systems for public sector entities was ongoing. It should be noted that uh, some entities which are managing huge quantities of assets like army, police, customs, need separate asset management systems because of their specific nature. But in order the processes were smooth, the integration uh, with the accounting and financial uh, reporting system is required. Uh, also, we seek to provide for mandatory use of electronic invoices when sales uh, are made to public sector entities and data exchange um, with other systems such as um, a public procurement system. Uh, to conclude, let me summarize what is important in order to implement the effective asset uh, accounting. First of all, we need to set up a separate account or ledger for every asset group, uh, which requires separate accounting treatment or presentation. Then uh, we need to define accounting and measurement rules. Uh, also to develop accounting systems, IT systems, by taking into account the needs of asset managers and decision makers and provide for necessary integrations with the asset management systems. And also, it is very important in order to, uh, to secure um, an appropriate implementation uh, to define who does what. Uh, the staff that orders and controls the assets uh, has full information. So their responsibility is to provide the information on depreciation, impairment, et cetera, to the accounting personnel. And the accounting personnel based on accounting policy and data received should register transactions in the accounting registries. So their responsibility is to ensure uh, uh, that the data in the accounting registries is complete for financial reporting. 
uh, so let me stop here and I'm ready to answer your questions if uh, you have some.